What's up, guys? This is Pedro from My St- Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're going to laugh. We are going to cry. But through it all, just know you are not alone. So let's get started. This is episode number 32, and my featured guest is Vince Vauter. Mr. Vauter retired after a 40-year career in newspapers, most recently as a president and publisher of the Evansville, Indiana Courier and Press. Mr. Vauter is a published author of two books, and his debut novel, Paperboy, received a new Barry Honor Award in 2014. The... Story is based on his r- r- real l- 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 life experience growing up in the 1950s as a person who stutters. I am honored to have him as a guest with me on my st- stuttering life. Welcome, Mr. Vater. Thanks, Pedro. And uh, can I just say uh, I truly appreciate uh, what you're doing. I think it's a good service. And and I think it helps to uh, get our story out. Thank you, sir. It is it it is my honor and privilege to have you here because we all have a story to share, and that is why we have this platform. So thank you so much. Okay, good. All right, let's get started. Do you remember when you first began to stutter? I do not. I recall a time in my life in which I did not stutter. I'm told that the moment I started talking that I would change words. For instance, I called the moon, I called it uh, the boon. So I've stuttered all my life from start to go. Wow. There are a lot of words that I cannot say. And so mm-hmm. I do the same thing <laughs> when I want <laughs> coffee because you know consonants are hard i will just leave off the c and say offy right right yeah the other person is confused because they don't know <laughs> do i want toffee or do i want coffee i say just just in 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 a cup please and then they get it that yeah. i want coffee <laughs> yeah well when i was in my childhood i gave everybody nicknames and and my friends thought I was this uh, cool and crazy guy, uh, giving everybody these funny names. And what they didn't realize, it was because I couldn't say their name. <laughs> and so I just changed their names. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we we might be twins. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does it run in the in your family does anyone else stutter uh i did have a first cousin uh, on my mother's side who stuttered and uh, he was exactly like me in that he did uh, everything in his power uh, to cover it up and uh so i could tell uh, he was stuttering uh he could tell i was stuttering but you know a few of our friends I didn't really know what was going on, but w- we found uh, ways to hide it. Yeah, I would say it runs in my family. Have you ever had speech therapy in school? And if so, was it helpful? I've had uh, every kind of speech therapy there is. None was in school. I went to a small private school, and so they didn't have speech department, speech therapist or anything. But I did have uh, private therapy lessons in uh, in uh, the 50s and uh, 60s, and it was absolutely horrible. No offense, it's, it's just it had not come that far yet. As I started my career, sought out other speech therapists, and I did a lot of uh, self-therapy. I even did things like uh, the Edinburgh Massacre, I'm sure you've heard of that. Uh, yes, and I did, uh, and I went to uh, fluency shaping programs. And I look back at all these, and I don't want t- to discount uh, any item, but I do want to say that 
it's part of my journey, but what finally seemed to work was I stopped ch- uh, chasing uh, the butterfly of fluency, and I just concentrated on finding my own voice. So fluency, uh, to me, is being able to say anything I want to say uh, when I want to say it, and it does not matter one whit uh, what the quality of that is. And that that has seemed to, I, I don't know, uh, uh, turn me loose, uh, give me freedom. So I'm very uh, comfortable now uh, with my stuttering voice. That is very um, interesting because I followed n- n- nearly the same journey. We are all different. There is True. N- no magic pill to cure stuttering. There are many techniques out there which mm-hmm. which um, have helped many people who stutter. The 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 techniques that I used they were n- n- not really helpful because I reverted back to my old habits mm-hmm. and like you chasing perfect speech it was just exhausting right. every single day when I was talking but I would be thinking of easier words in my head to substitute because I knew there was a hard word coming that I could not say. So as I was talking, I was also thinking of much easier words to, 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 to take their place. What I found is after the conversation, I was just drained. Right. Right. Well, I still, uh, I still uh, substitute uh, words, and and I don't feel guilty about it anymore. Part of my voice, I try to say uh, what I want to say, and I do say what I want to say. Sometimes it takes a little uh, circuitous route, but but I always manage to get it out, and that's all I'm interested in. I travel the country now, and uh, in the last five or six years, I've spoken at probably 125 uh, schools and gatherings and find it something I truly enjoy now. It's, I want, I want a young people and I want older people to know that, that I'm free from my speech now and that everybody can do that. If you just give up the, uh, the hunt uh, for perfect uh, fluency, if you just concentrate on finding your voice. That time in my life, that was when I turned 40 years old. Mm-hmm. At at 40, I told myself that enough was enough. I was right. I was f- fighting it every single day. Right. And when the time that I woke up until the time I got home from work, my body was just completely and utterly exhausted. Right. When I turned 40, I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm not going yeah. to chase perfect speech anymore. This is mm-hmm. who I am. This is my voice my true voice, and I embraced it. And once I did that, let me tell you, there was something on my shoulders that was just lifted. Yeah. And I felt, wow, I wish I had done this in my 20s. But what I believe is that uh, 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 um, everything happens for a reason. And when I turned 40, I said, that's it. I'm done. I yeah. st- I'm Pedro. I stutter. Oh, well, life yeah. will go on. Right. Right. Well, I think mine occurred probably a little bit earlier. Um, I guess in my thirties, maybe I think what happened was 
I got married. I started a family. I was in a career uh, which I enjoyed, and I decided I better get on top of this. And like you, I decided, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with stuttering, just like there's nothing wrong with being bald. I mean, I'm as... <laughs> I'm as bald as a cue ball. Well, you know, what's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. Same thing with stuttering. So it, it yeah, uh, it was a, it was a big relief and, and I'm no longer, I can't tell you how much I stutter now. I don't pay attention to it. When I first started doing uh, public speaking, I would come home and I would kind of grade myself and I would say, well, I had a few a few hesitations, a few blocks, and so I'm going to give myself a 5.5. And then I would say, well, I did okay on that speech, and so I was about an 8. Uh, well, you know, I don't even do that anymore. I I don't care. You know, just as long as I can express myself with what I want to say, uh, I could care less about how it sounds. Have you ever had any anyone tell you to slow down? <laughs> oh, Yeah. 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 And um, my standard, my standard answer is, sir, uh, you have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) Now, have you ever had anyone tell you, can you just please sing it? (laughs) Well, yeah. And my standard answer on that is, man, you hadn't heard me sing. Tell me about your high school experience as a stutterer. It's very simple. I did everything I could to try to hide it. And I mean, I did some crazy stuff. And then I tried to find my self-worth in athletics, threw myself into all sports, thinking that if I could prove myself in sports, then I didn't have to talk. And that's that was my thought. And uh, coming out of high school, I thought I had to be a professional baseball player. Wow. That was my plan. And then I got to college. I, I got to Louisiana State University, and I found out I wasn't quite as good as I thought I was in baseball. I saw my first 95-mile-an-hour fastball. I decided I better find something else I could do. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, I, you know – this is how things work. I said, okay, uh, since I can't talk, uh, maybe I can learn how to write. And so I majored in journalism. My first job was at a sports was as a sports writer in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And little did I know that sports writers and reporters have to do a whole lot more talking than they do writing. <laughs> So I had a lot of trouble at the start. If you're trying to interview a coach who has just uh, lost a game, he doesn't want to talk to you, and uh, you know he's not gonna uh, he's not gonna put up with your blocks and your prolongations and everything. So I was really in a quandary there. But then changed jobs, and I went on the copy desk, and I found out that. that that I was good at copy editing, I was good at headline writing, I was good at editing. Uh, And so I threw myself uh, into that, uh, and I found out I loved uh, the newspaper business. And so so I concentrated on that, and uh, slowly I worked myself uh, into management. And I think the reason is, is, uh, is because I had an empathy for other people. I knew how much uh, I struggled, and I could see their struggles. considered myself a pretty good manager, Uh, and so I just rose uh, through the ranks like that. Thankfully, some of my bosses had confidence in me, uh, and they could see that I could overcome uh, what I needed to, so they gave me the chances, and, and so, you know, you know, I think we have to have some folks like that around us who are willing uh, to give us chances. Yes, we do. You were talking about in high school that you you went into sports because mm-hmm. that was less talking. Mm-hmm. And I was the opposite. I was I was invited to join the drama club. 
Okay. So a lot of talking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I found out is in doing those plays, in, in having them give me a character, that character did not stutter. Right. Therefore, when I played that character on stage, I did not stutter. I'll tell you a quick story about that. A teacher in my high school suggested uh, that I try that, and I, I was so fearful of my stutter, completely turned her down. And I said, there is no way. King back, I think it's one of the worst decisions I probably I ever made in my life. It probably, I, I, I think now, if I had thrown myself into that, I probably could have done it. And I've talked to s several people who, who uh, 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 that's their story. In fact, in fact, I had the privilege of uh, talking to James Earl Jones, uh, and that's his story, you know, all the way. Wow. Uh, if he's in a casual conversation, he still is a person who stutters. You know, if he's Darth Vader or if he's uh, somebody in a stage play, he does not stutter uh, one bit. In fact, <laughs> he'll blow you away with his voice. <laughs> Yes, he will. he 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 has that very deep voice. Yes. <laughs> Picture me in a high school theater um, auditorium, mm -hmm. and it's um, the night of the play, and so you know it's a packed house. I'm on stage. I'm in costume. I say all my lines, and I could see. <laughs> I could see. People in the audience who knew me with their mouths open. Right. <laughs> yeah. Then after the play, they 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 would approach me and ask, "What was that? I thought you stuttered." <laughs> <laughs> then you would show them what stuttering was again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Do you have any? advice for parents and teachers regarding children who stutter? As I speak to schools, uh, I get that question a lot. And I think the, uh, the best advice I can give is to tell the teacher the first thing, it should not, you, you, you should never skip the child, gloss over it. It's got to be uh, confronted. And so what I suggest is if a teacher sees a student is having problems, that they should go to the student uh, after class and say, I see you're struggling some, and this is what I want to do. I'm going to call on you uh, like I normally would. If you don't want to say anything, uh, however, if you just don't feel good that day, if you're having uh, trepidations, just give me a thumbs down, and and I will go on. If you feel like you want to uh, try to participate, just give me a thumbs up. Just do the best you can, and I guarantee you that no one in the class will say anything, will have any kind of uh, negative uh, reaction. You just do the best you can. And, I, you know, I've had some teachers tell me that's hard to do, but they have found out it worked. And, and, that, and that the one thing it does, it gives the student the opportunity to try them, to, uh, to try to participate, and it takes a little of the pressure off. Wow. That's what I wish I had in, in school because the first time i believe it was first grade where you have to s say your name You're right i had such a horrible traumatic experience and mm -hmm. my p's p's are just the worst well you know all letters in the alphabet <laughs> are horrible for me but i could not s s 
say my name. And so yeah. I could I could see every kid in there laughing mm -hmm. at me, pointing and laughing. And so I told myself that would never happen again. And so yeah. from that day onward, I missed the first two days of right. school throughout mm -hmm. my entire school year. Also, in college, I missed the first two days because you 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 have to stand up, say right. who you are, and what's your major, and you know, blah blah blah. So I missed the first two days all through grade school. Yep. College, the um, undergrad, and a graduate school, and that's how I how I coped. Yeah. With it. Well, well, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to see your peas and raise you a V. Uh, <laughs> my name is Vince Vauder, uh, two Vs, and I cannot say my name either. In fact, and this is rep, this is uh, 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 the story is told in Paperboy. On two different occasions, I passed out trying uh, to say my name. Oh my God, uh, we are twins. I, uh, we are twins. I would just hold my breath and and. Uh, uh, try to push the sound out, and and I would just, you know, I turned red and I passed out. That, yeah. So, so, so I would do anything um, not to have to say my name. What would be your advice for parents? Well, uh, that's a tough one. In my case, I was the elephant in the room. We never talked about it, and my parents were good parents. But they were confused about stuttering. You know, the, uh, this was in the 50s and 60s. And, you know, I went to, to a psychiatrist. Uh, uh, I even went to hypnotist. You know, uh, we tried everything. And but I think we did. We didn't uh, do that as a family. Uh, they just uh, sent me off, you know, and they didn't know what to do. Uh, you know, I can. A feel for them. So, so I guess the advice to parents is just uh, try to open up communication lines and just be honest and say, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on either. I know that stuttering has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. We're still trying to figure it out. Uh, you're going to be on a journey and uh, we'll be there with you uh, on the journey, but uh, you're going to have to do the most of it because uh, it's your stutter. No two are alike. We'll help you uh, uh, any way we can, and whatever we come up with is going to be your voice, uh, and you need to be satisfied with that. Do you think that, that parents should tell their children who stutter to stop, breathe, and talk over again, or or to just let them speak. I think th I think th that they just need to maintain eye contact and wait until the sun goes down if it takes that long. I uh, I don't think they need to give any advice. That's for the speech therapist. You you talk about seeing a psychiatrist like mm -hmm. I did. All right. And you went to a hypnotist. Right. Which I did. I loved hypnosis. Mm -hmm. That was the only time in my entire life that every organ in my body was at rest. Yeah. I, I, I just had uh, one session uh, with a hypnotist. He was, uh, I, I'm not sure... Uh, I'm not sure he was qualified, uh, uh, and so I didn't uh, have a good experience uh, with that. The, uh, the psychiatrist, I think, he was not a speech pathologist, but he he, he could see my struggle, and uh, he did, in a way, uh, help me with uh, thought processes. You know, I, once again, I was... I, I was in my uh, I was in my middle teens, I guess, and and uh, 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 and I don't think I got a lot of worth out of that. It's it's hard to understand what a psychiatrist uh, what a psychiatrist is saying. Sometimes they 
they uh, they speak in uh, speak in riddles sometimes. Now we were both born in the South, correct? Mm -hmm. Had you ever tried voodoo? And let me tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> I had tried everything. Yeah. There there was a day when I was told that maybe voodoo will help. So. There was this woman, and she held a rooster's foot over my head, <laughs> and she did a little chanting, mm -hmm. and then I turned around a couple of times. Then she took an egg and cracked <laughs> it um, into a glass of water. Mm -hmm. Now, had the yolk stayed the same, you know, not broken... Mm -hmm. then my stutter would be cured. Although oh, wow. if it had broken, <laughs> the stutter would still be there. Right. Well, she cracked the egg and it plopped in there and it was whole. Wow. And so I paid Congratulations. her. Congratulations. Well, th well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I paid her the money. Yeah. And then I walked out and guess what? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I said, well, that's 40 bucks down the drain. Right. And so right. Yeah. I just, well, yeah. well, I didn't, um, I never did any voodoo, but, <laughs> but I did something just about as, in, as insane D during my, I, I guess my sophomore, uh, junior years in high school, it seemed like we read a lot in class, you know, you know, we, you know, we had to read, uh, uh, lines of Shakespeare, and uh, I got the idea that if I kept a thumbtack uh, in my pocket, anytime I got up to speak, uh, I would jam that thumbtack into my palm. Ouch. Uh, and that's what I did, and uh, sometimes my hand would come out of my pocket uh, bleeding like crazy. You know, I was trying to, I was trying to take away the pain of stuttering, uh, with the pain of the thumbtack. Um, and of course I just wound up uh, stuttering and my hand hurting, uh, you know? So, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we try a lot of, uh, a lot of very odd things. Yes, we do. Can you talk about what led you to the path of uh, the path of publishing mm -hmm. well well like i said i m my sim my simplistic uh, thinking was that if i can't talk well uh, then i'm going to write of course that's a uh, foolhardy if you're a reporter you're 90% talking and the 10% writing you know and so it doesn't uh, make any sense but i did i I, I felt comfortable with words, and I found out, I guess because of my stutter, I thought a lot about words. And because I substituted words of so much, I probably had a good vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and and so I found I found I did like uh, the newspaper business, and uh, one other thing which which is, I guess it's a little hard uh, to explain, but when you're in a newsroom, there, there are all these noises are going on. Uh, the police radio, uh, the editors are yelling back and forth. The, uh, the wire machines were going crazy. And, and I found in that a kind of a calmness. And I found like... I, that 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 uh, helped me concentrate. Uh, later on in life, uh, when I was about uh, 50 years old, I went to a, a civic club uh, meeting, uh, and there was a speaker who talked about uh, adult uh, ADD. He gave all the symptoms, and I had every one of them. And so I went to him uh, later on, and you know uh, we had some sessions, and he said. You could have been the poster child for attention a deficit a disorder, and and uh, so I found out that that was uh, some of my problem. Also, I try to read all I can about ADD and uh, stuttering, and what I have 
uh, comes to the conclusion of is there may not be a connection with ADD and stuttering, but the fact that you have ADD may have something to do with the difficulty you have in overcoming your stutter. So, 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 so I think there is a connection there. But yeah, I uh, I was just comfortable in the newsroom, and I found. I could operate very well in that environment. That's great. Can you talk about your two books? Uh, Yes. My first, um, uh, I retired when I was uh, 60 years old and, and, and I said, I know I've, I've got to write this book. I had no idea if anybody would publish it, if anybody read it. And, and so I took five years. I wrote this book. The response has been amazing. Uh, it's been uh, published in in uh, twelve uh, foreign languages. It's still uh, it's still on reading list across the country. It's a book I always knew I would write, Paperboy. And while it's fiction, ninety percent of it is the story of my childhood. I did have to take over a friend's a newspaper route one month in July growing up in Memphis, and that's what uh, the story's about, and it's about all the difficulties I had. Then I didn't think I was going to write another book. You know, I thought I told my uh, story the best I could, and I was satisfied. And then, you know, some people said, well, you kind of left us hanging here. You know, what happened? So I wrote Copy Boy. That book skips six years to... where the protagonist is a 17 years old, you know, it tells about his stuttering uh, journey from 11 years old uh, to 17 years old. And it shows, you know, it shows uh, the wrong things he did and it shows uh, the right things he did. And, you know, it's the story of a journey is what it is. Wow. That is amazing. I'm Mm -hmm. thinking, I'm contemplating (laughs) Writing a book. I'm not sure mm-hmm. yet, although that's on my bucket list. Right. Yeah. You were talking about earlier, talking about empathy. Mm-hmm. Um, is is that what st- st- stuttering has taught you? I think that's a lot of it. And, you know, the, the, um, there's no scientific evidence of this, but t- to me, a person who stutters, I think we look at the world not exactly like uh, other people, and we see when we are struggling, I think we notice uh, when other people uh, struggle. I'm not talking with stuttering. You know, you know I think it can be anything, uh, problems at home, uh, substance abuse problems. So in my mind, uh, people who stutter have the uh, have the potential uh, to be good managers. We know what the darker side is life uh, uh, like. You know, we uh, we have been there. Uh, we are still there. Uh, we're still working on it. And uh, so, you know, uh, you know, I think it makes for a good manager. That is so true. St- stuttering has also taught me empathy. You know, right. has. It has also taught me resilience mm-hmm. and and courage, because like what you st- st- stated um, earlier, we are we're different because we have to work twice as hard, maybe right. three times as hard to do what 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 our mothers do quite easily, mm-hmm. like the voicemail. Many people will record their voicemail, give their greeting, and they'll mm-hmm. be done in 10 to 15 seconds. Mm-hmm. Well, in Pedro's case, <laughs> it takes me about an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I have a hard time with all of the letters, all mm-hmm. of the consonants, all of the vowels. And there are times, there have been times 
where, like you, I've had a block, almost passed out, and so I just hit st stop and and just start right. all over again. And right. so when when people hear my voicemail, they go, "Wow, you don't you you you." you don't stutter yeah but what they don't know is that it took me one hour yeah yeah uh, let me ask you a question uh, pedro i uh, do you have trouble uh talking to a siri or or those uh, a computer uh, whatever you call them uh, a computer assistance well let me tell you mr botter <laughs> <laughs> i tried all of those yeah. And all I heard back was, sorry, please repeat. <laughs> sorry, yeah. please repeat. We have a voice uh, thing on our TV uh, controller uh, where you can speak into, uh, you know, speak into the controller. You know, sometimes, sometimes I want to throw it across the room <laughs> and sometimes it just makes me laugh, you know. Like I'm talking to this robot, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm getting a little uh, hard of hearing uh, now. And uh, so uh, sometimes I'll have to say, close caption on, you know, sometimes I'll stutter and it, you know, it won't understand it. <laughs> and so I'll start saying, you idiot, close <laughs> caption on. <laughs> yes, uh, I can. Um, I can. Com completely relate. My new vehicle is voice activated everything. Oh my gosh. Um, and so I just do everything manually. I turn on the yeah. radio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, where can people find you? Uh, 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 um, if they want to learn more about your books, your, your presentations, Okay. I've got a website, uh, VinceValder.com, V-I-N-C-E-V-A-W-T-E-R.com. That's my website, and and it's got my email on it. It tells more about me uh, than you'd ever want to know, so so that's good. It's funny. If you'd have asked – if I had had a website uh, 50 years ago and you'd asked me that question, I would have passed out automatically. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vauter, it has been an honor. It has been hashtag awesome, hashtag okay. amazing to have you here on well, my stuttering life. I would like to th thank you for spending your day with me today well good uh once again uh j i just let me say i do appreciate uh, what you're doing i think it's up to us to to, to uh, try to teach others about what's going on about about what fluency is and that there is nothing in the wrong i was doing a little uh stuttering it's good for the world in my opinion <laughs> that i 100 percent agree thank you mr vater and and i know i know that this will not be the last time that we speak because i have many 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 more questions to ask you okay good uh, thank you pedro thank you sir be well take care okay uh, bye-bye there you have it. If you like this podcast, head on over to Apple iTunes and subscribe, rate, and review. You can follow me on all of my social media with my stuttering life. Thank you again, and we will talk again. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.